thank you everyone for joining us here today with another edition of Restoration Talk for the month of May. This Restoration Talk is going to be focusing on enduring the race. And as always, if anybody is listening who hasn't heard this before or is a first time listener, this isn't just relig religious talk that will be going on for about 10 or 15 minutes. It's a quick audio discussion that myself and Pastor Florencio Vigil of Restoration Church uh, just discuss every day life issues for people who are enduring certain things, especially during this COVID-19 issue that everybody is enduring. And it, it's based upon faith principles that really allow us to get through each and every day positively and, and working in, in, in a working way that works for us. And so with that, I want to encourage you to just take 10, 15 minutes, listen to it. If it starts to speak to you, if it starts to move you in a little bit, then I want to encourage you to take the next step and reach out to us. You can do so via our website at www.restorationchurchlc.com or our Facebook at Restoration Church or even email us at restorationchurchlc at gmail.com. Any of which of those ways, you can also reach out to the phone number for Restoration Church at 575-621-2350. That's 575-621-2350. And we'll give you some extra next steps that you can take and partner with us and kind of prep for that day when church lets up and starts getting back into motion and hopefully that day is soon but as always i'm joined with pastor florencio vigil lead pastor of restoration church so pastor Flo, thank you for being here and if you want to say amen a few things. well thank you for having me brother again and i'm just encouraging everyone to continue to run your race because we're like you said we're all in a race and to realize that you never know you know what's going to happen in the near future, how things are going to start up again and how difficult things might get or who knows it might get easier, but who knows? Who knows? And it's something to, to think about. Right. Absolutely. Now to cap off a little bit of, or to, excuse me, to recap, kind of our last Restoration Talk discussion, which was in April, we talked about the train of thought. So if you haven't heard that audio discussion, we encourage you to go back, play it real briefly. It'll really get you in the the mindset of how we think and to kind of bypass depressive thoughts and if you think that everything is going good or if you're in a position where things may not be going good how to challenge yourself to overcome those thoughts and really push through that depression and really try to overcome the train of thought that could could potentially be bringing you down now to kind of um, add on to that and take it to the next level we've we've titled this audio discussion enduring the race and the purpose behind that is right now especially in the time that we're at and this is may 8th that we're we're doing this audio discussion but we potentially don't know where things are going to go right the That's governor right. said hopefully in a perfect world maybe may 15th and we have people who are skeptic skeptic and some people who are hoping in full throttle that may 15th is the go-ahead but the truth of the matter is we don't know yeah and when you're running a race, regardless of whether you know where the finish line is or it's not, you have to have a strong mentality, a strong train of thought to be able to push past or to reach the goal that you're going to. And so because we're all enduring by definition of potentially having to endure everything that we've done so far at the stay home order, kind of gather our thoughts and some of our social butterflies who really want to be out and about or extroverts or people who are engaging with people are really not realizing how much they needed that and needed to be around that and for a lot of the introverts who were already kind of thinking well i was already struggling with this now i'm really having to push back past to begin with this hopefully discussion will kind of appeal to everybody in that kind of mindset to say you know what we don't know what the outcome is it's a fact of the matter the truth of the nature is we don't know but that doesn't mean we need to stop enduring or stop pushing through that race or stop running the race that we are full throttle, ready for what's to come. Because hopefully, if it is May 15th, God bless. Hopefully, like, yep, that'll, be awesome. that'll be awesome. And if it's not, well, it's not going to slow our faith down any which way. It's not going to slow down not any belief in, in what we're doing with God and every, in our walk with it. And absolutely, it's not going to cause us to take steps back and to say, okay, well, now we need to reshape. And I think, Pastor Flo, you mentioned it in your your sermon this last past Wednesday or, or Sunday. I, and I love the way you phrased it. You said, whether there's a new norm when we come back, a new normal, or 
there's a back to normal or what if it doesn't ever change we need to be prepared yeah, that's but right. the faith doesn't change throughout any of this nothing regardless yeah. of whether we had church or not regardless of church stopped or church continued to go that doesn't stop the increasing challenge of building your faith walking with god and continuing to live a positive joyful energized life in faith i mean it doesn't change anything Really, I mean, unless unless I'm wrong with that. Well, you know, and it shouldn't change nothing. What right. happens is a lot of people want to quit, and and if you quit and give up, that means you didn't finish your race. Right. See, we're supposed to completely go forward and not quit, not want to give up, because God never gave up on us. So why are we going to give up? Amen. And that's one thing we got to do. We got to endure it, and we got to, you know, this is not a, a sprint. This is a uh, a marathon. Right. You see, we run in a marathon, and when we face with different trials and and, and temptations and situations in our lives, we can't just throw in the towel and, and say, I quit, or, or you know, throw up the, the white flag and surrender. We actually got to continue in during this race that we're called to do, and that's to further the gospel and also to, to continue living life that we're supposed to live to the fullest. And God wants us to have a full life and wants us not to, to quit because a lot of people quit and they give up. You know, I've heard of even pastors, and it's pretty sad right. that pastors even, just recently that a pastor in California uh, committed suicide. Another pastor just recently, I don't remember the other state, but a self-inflicted wound. And it's like, it's like you know, what's going on? See, we got to continue going forward and enduring this race that we're in. And it's very crucial that we, as followers of Jesus, follow and the Lord to the fullest to the T, we can do as much as we, the best we can do is to not quit. And, and he'll supply the grace enough to continue going. And that's one thing we need to do. Absolutely. And I, it, it's going to get serious for a moment here because what you just mentioned is absolutely of integral importance for all Christian believers right now. If we've got heads of the church, if we got certain people, and it wasn't even apparent to, to me within the last couple of weeks, but... You've mentioned that you have not stopped working since this coronavirus, and if anything, you've been fully in perpetual motion even more since yeah. we've gotten the stay home order. You've gotten people, and this is, speaks volumes to Restoration Church as well as yourself as to what you're doing, but people calling for home blessings, people calling for counseling, people calling for faith building uh, prayers, people calling for hospital visits. I mean, nonstop, plus not including the expansion of Restoration Church for everything it's doing to reach people. You said you got requests overseas for people wanting to partner with Restoration Church, not including everything that you're outputting in terms of media, sermons, this discussion alone, as well as other things. So it's it's yeah. not stopped. And the way I look at it is if we are – if we are – or if I, I should say, not we, but if if I'm only having enough faith in to deal with the next issue where I need faith, to use it, it's not going to be based on how much faith I need to pull from my bank and use at that time. Mm -hmm. If I'm constantly growing the faith and I'm constantly walking and building it and strengthening it, then absolutely it's going to take care of itself when the time hits, when it's ready to go. And I don't need to think, okay, well, I need to pull down from some sort of phantom area to put the faith into its application. Like the faith building is ready to go. And so just because church has stopped or church is taking a break, and I decide, well, I can't attend, but I'm not going to watch. And I'm kind of taking these steps to kind of be lax about it and not build the strength up of the faith when I need to. We have more of a reason now to, than ever to just be flooded to build our faith up, to just constantly hear, hear faith-guided sermons, to hear faith-guided discussions, to read the Word, especially to hear praise and worship nonstop. I mean, there's not much else we can do. And so if I'm not taking advantage of this opportunity to build, be strong in faith – and provide more of an endurance for my faith, then I'm wrong. But what I had the realization of and hearing you're preaching this last week, and from hearing people's accounts of what they've been enduring with struggles lately, it's almost shocking to me, but I understand the position because of what we're dealing with now, that people are struggling. People are having that almost collapse of endurance i mean just trying to make it that far to that just yeah. that last long haul but a realization you mentioned in your preaching that on last wednesday i believe it was is what if just may 15th isn't the uh, 
the goal we reach? What if it prolongs further? What if it's not for a long period of time? That's right. So what would you do then? Exactly. And do you want to touch a little bit on how you discuss that on Wednesday? Or what, what, what is your recommendation as a pastor? What? Well, what I recommend is this. Do, you can, no man's an island. You don't, don't try to do things by yourself. Uh, we do need... See, and that's the hard part about this di- social distance, distancing. We need people. We need to have fellowship with others. And it's pretty sad because we're not able to do that. You know, like it says in Ecclesiastes that, that uh, you know, how can, uh, you know, one man help the other one up if he falls? Or how can, you know what I mean, for a two or a two or three strand cord is, is strong. You know, when two or more come together, it's supposed to be, you know, and that's pretty sad. But how hard it is when, if you're feeling by yourself, you're feeling you're wanting to quit. I feel you shouldn't think that way. And no man's an island, like I said, you're not a lone ranger. You know, even Long Ranger had Tano. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we need, you need to call out. You need to cry out to somebody. You need to especially cry out to the Lord. But you need to ask and, and maybe call. Call me, you know, call or call someone, a good friend of yours, that someone you can talk to and let them know how you feel. Because you never know what's going on with people that are not, are wanting to quit on this race. Because we're in this race together. And that's the thing. That's what's all about community, about church about the body of Christ. We're all one community. Uh, um, like it says in, in the Greek, kononia. You know what I mean? We have, we have communion together, community. Uh, it's about kononia and, and about coming together. And that's one thing that I do. And I want to share a scripture real quick okay. out of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. It says, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run? You see, it's not just one person running a race then it will just be a solo race. But no, we're all running this race. But one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. You see, we gotta gotta remember there's something to gain at the end. We're gonna win a prize, okay? And that's with the Lord, and that's what's awesome. And verse 25 says, And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do do it to obtain a perishable crown. But we for an unperishable crown, imperishable, see, imperishable. In other words, the crown that we're going for, the prize that we got is not going to perish. It's it's everlasting. Amen. And that's what we got to do. Verse uh, 26 says, says, therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty. In other words, we need to make our, our, our focus certain and we need to run with certainty. Thus, I fight not as one who beats the air. In other words, we're not just... Like doing shadow boxing, we're supposed to. We're gonna, we're gonna beat. We're gonna hit, hit the mark. Yeah. You see, though, the, the yeah. definition for sin is missing the mark. We want to hit the mark. Okay, verse twenty-seven. But I d- discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. See, I discipline my body. In other words, we need to say, you know what? I'm not going to let myself want to quit. I'm going to continue to endure. Endurance is what we need to do. Jesus himself endured the cross. You know, he endured it. He endured all the shame. He endured it all for us. He could have quit. He could have said, you know what? That's it. I'm I'm not going to deal with this anymore. I'm out of here. But he didn't. Why? Because of love. And he loves us so much that he did endure the cross for us. Amen. It's shame, everything. And us... When we do know that we are in this race, we are enduring this race. And that's what we got to do and not quit. And it's almost a part of a, in that same example you said of, of Jesus dying on the cross for a larger picture. That was what he was enduring for at the time, knowing that he had a bigger picture to fulfill. If we're running a race, or you take an athlete who's in competition, somebody from the Olympics, somebody who's in collegiate track and field, somebody who's running a race, they're not just running the one race at their competition and being done with their entire career. And I guarantee you, much of those people who are at that caliber of running a race aren't just running one race and then that got there. They're running a series of races to hopefully have an ending point in their season to achieve certain goals. Subsequently, you could say, win a world title, win a national title, 
also pay for their schooling, obtain an education, a grander scheme of things. My question to people who would be listening, running the race of saying, I want to run the race to get back to work. What are you going to do once you get there? Exactly. What, what, what's, what's the purpose of it? What is the purpose of us expediting this race to hurry up, to get back to work, to go nowhere? I mean, that, my dad used to say, you're always in a hurry to go nowhere. We're going to hurry up to get back to work to complain about being at work. And then there's no grand scheme of what our purpose is behind that. Paul talks about in the scripture you just read it is a metaphor showing us that there's a greater prize yep. long term in a bigger perspective that we've got no idea that's going on. So what is your purpose for the race that you're running for now? We're race our race that we have to hurry up to get back to work, but do we have a purpose for hurrying up to do it? Are we gonna go back excited that we're gonna share the 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 principles of God? The joy, the love, the peace, the thanks, the things we've endured, the things we've learned. And to go back to something you mentioned now that I, I, I don't want to forget it. But you were talking about the, the – was it camaraderie or the, the fellowship amongst yeah, believers? Yeah, community. And, yeah. and how people – Community. Yeah, community. Exactly. And I, I, my other question would be to those who, who say they miss that is how many of you, especially if you're in the congregation or your own church believers, have continued that even outside during this quarantine? Because it's nothing to call another brother or sister in Christ to see how they're doing and check in and exchange words of knowledge and understand like from the other person what they're enduring and help them build them up and help them give them words of encouragement, what you're learning, what you're doing, what you're seeing, and how God's moving in your life right now. And it's a way to build one another up, and to keep the community going. Yep. Just because we're at home and we have an instruction to be at home doesn't mean anything else is changing outside of the house in terms of how we operate. I could be wrong, but is that would you be in agreement with that? I'd or? be in agreement with that where people need to reach out and touch someone. That's what back in the day when the phone, a phone a commercial would be, reach out and touch someone. Yeah. What's going on? How come people aren't calling enough? How come people... You know, I'm getting a lot of calls. I'm getting a lot of... But we need to say, okay, I'm going to reach out and I'm going to touch someone and I'm going to talk to someone. I'm going to encourage someone. So if you get someone in your spirit, you come up as someone in your heart, that, in your mind that, okay, well, that, that person came up in my mind. Guess what? You should call them. You should c contact them. If not, well, then we're just like, like Paul was saying, we're just beating in the air. Or we're like you said, we're running a, a race and not getting nowhere, like a hamster that gets in a wheel yeah. and just keeps spinning and spinning and spinning. We're not spinning our wheels here. We're wanting to engage for community even outside the walls of the church. It's got to continue and it's got to go forward and pray for people. If somebody comes up in your spirit, I don't care what time it is, if their name comes up, pray for them. Amen. If their name comes up and it's a decent time, maybe it's not after 12, like some people have called me before. Uh, but <laughs> as long as it's before 10 o'clock, give them a call and say, hey, how you doing? Is everything cool? How's everything going? Yeah. You know what I mean? And when we do that, I think that's what's going to help us. We got to know that we're here for each other. It's not about, like I said, we don't go solo. This is not a Han Solo thing. Okay? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, we're supposed to do it together. So what would be your recommendation for anybody listening that says, okay, well, how do I figure out my purpose? One, I'm not a believer, let alone a churchgoer. I'm just taking a five-minute break to hear this. Or I am an active member of your church, and I'm listening to this, and I'm inspired to say, okay, you're right. I don't want to just have a purpose to get back to work. I don't want to just have a purpose to hurry up and get to where I need to. I may even have a purpose of saying, look, my purpose because – or I'm thinking my purpose is I'm not having a check. I don't have a check coming in. That's why I'm trying to hurry up and get back to work. But – you're saying take a look at the bigger picture. Yep. Well, how do I find that out or what, what approach do I take to discovering that? Well, the best thing to do is, is to ask the Lord. Just come, go to him in prayer. And then once we start, give me a call and we'll discuss. Yeah. Like We can see how, how you fit in serving God even out, outside the church or in the church when we start getting together. But for now, you need to give me a call. Or, you know, ask the Lord. The Bible says in James that if you lack wisdom, ask of the Lord and he'll give Amen. it. So that's what we got to do. We got to seek the Lord and, and say, you know, okay, God, what, you know, you giving me a gift. Uh, well, how can I use it? What can I do? And then get ready to serve because that's what Jesus himself said. I've come to serve, not to be served. So when we start doing that, then we'll find out our greater purpose 
and our purpose to in the body of what we need to do because you know people are different parts and that's what we got to understand you could be a toe you could be a hand you could be whatever yeah okay and and that's one thing we we just don't quit we we endure to the end and we focus on god and we cry out to the lord seek his face and pray and just ask him for wisdom of what else i should do now and you even mentioned right then and there a perfect first step to discovering that purpose the grand purpose already or a bigger i should say not the grand purpose but the bigger purpose that already if you're listening to this the first step that you just heard is calling you. Yeah. It's an option that now for anybody that that is listening, I'll call it divine that God's already put on Pastor Flo's heart to say, "Call me because things like this aren't easy to say. It's not like a McDonald's where I can say, "Okay, you get a number 2 and that's what you're getting because that's your purpose." There's a lot of moving parts in people's lives. I'm enduring things that other people aren't, but I have different contributing factors to those parts and you to be able to make a spiritually led encouraging decision to help discover that purpose which is what you do for years right that's yeah. what you've done in the church for oh yeah hundreds of people yeah in every church you've been at for people who call you all hours of the night because like you said those who seek wisdom and there's nothing wrong with that that's what yeah. the scripture tells us to do yeah iron so as iron sharpens one iron so does one man sharpen another that's what we're here to do and to help each other discover that it's the ever long process of living a life that that's we're here right. to do and you'll probably get calls from the same people that you've been getting calls since teenagers, probably till 70, 80 year old, year yep, old. I think I mean, so. <laughs> uh, I'm not, I don't mean to prophesy that in your life, but the, the time span of a man is 120, so Come if on, they're man. 80, <laughs> you're going to be getting those calls at yeah. 100 years old. Which I don't so, mind. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We, and that's why I do put my phone number out there. And yeah. a lot of people, you know, when they... When they see, they've come by the church and they've seen the, you know, hours and they said, for information, call. And I say, Pastor Flo, and they have my phone number there. Everybody's like, what? You give your phone number out? Yep. That way I can connect with pe with people who God has put me to, to le help lead. And I'm not the sh shepherd. Jesus is the shepherd. I am the under shepherd. So here I am to help. And that's what it's about. And that's what we got to do. And remember, we're enduring this race together. We're in this race together. We're not a one-man show. It's not a Pastor Flo show. It's yep. about having everybody get involved and all of us running this race together. Yep. We can encourage each other. I can give you some water. Amen. I can give you yep. some help. I can give you some tips on, on, on stretching your muscles to gain more faith. And that's one thing that we need to realize. It is about that. It's about helping each other out. I know when I get kind of tired in the race, I hand you the baton, brother. I say, Amen. Take, the, take it you the see? rest of the way. <laughs> there you go. And then we just keep going. And we'll, go, we'll do it until, <laughs> until the time when the Lord calls us home or if he comes back and takes us. Yeah. Amen. 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 But you got to be careful with Pastor Flo because he runs relays. He comes right back around to hand it back to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I sure will. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Well, I appreciate your time, Pastor Flo, and that. And like you just mentioned, uh, one thing I don't want to touch over is... You do that also judgment free. You've gotten calls that you don't know the person ever met before and mm -hmm. they start confiding in you and you start from scratch to say, okay, let's do this. Yep. So that's for anybody out there, regardless of you've known a Pastor Flo for years. That's the goal of Restoration Church. Restoration starts somewhere. Amen. Restoration Church starts somewhere. So uh, Pastor Flo, if you want to lead us in an ending prayer and we want to thank everybody for, for hearing us out today and continue to stay engaged with Restoration Church's uh, videos and website and everything else that that you can be amen all right let's pray father in the name of jesus i pray for those father god that are enduring this race lord this trial that we're going through these times lord this season it is just a season lord and we know god you're going you're going to help us through all these seasons god and we thank you god that through your blessings and through your grace and your mercy and your love we can overcome anything because with you, all things are possible. And I pray, God, for your anointing. I pray, God, for your blessings. I pray, God, for all that you're going to do upon in our lives, Lord. As we focus on you, God, we're going to run this race till it is finished, we're complete, Lord. And we thank you, God, that we will endure to the end until we hear you say, Well done, faithful servant. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. <laughs>